At the 1976 Briar, the team from Newfoundland, skipped by Jack McDuff, had been given odds of 1,000 to 1 to win the coveted tankard. That wasn't a surprise since that province had perennially finished near the bottom of the standings when it came to the Canadian Championship. But this time out, everything meshed together. Along with some help from the legendary Sam Richardson, the McDuff team started hot and rolled along, eventually defeating Ontario in the last round to secure the first title for Newfoundland and Labrador, and possibly the most improbable victory in Briar history. After regulation play at the 1956 Briar concluded, Manitoba's Billy Walsh was tied with Al Phillips of Ontario, setting up a one-game playoff for the title. After playing the full 12 ends, the score was tied, necessitating an extra end. With his last shot, Walsh appeared to have no opportunity to score, with an Ontario stone in the forefoot almost buried. The sweepers hold up as it goes by the guard. It strikes the Ontario shot rock out of play and rolls over just fighting the 12 foot ring and Manitoba counts one. With a thunderous roar echoing in his ears, Skip Billy Walsh of Manitoba walks down the ice to receive congratulations from the Ontario ring after a sensational last rock that climaxed one of the greatest briar finishes in history. In late 2015, popular curler Craig Saville was diagnosed with cancer and left the competitive circuit to undergo treatment for Hodgkin's lymphoma. The following March, when the Briar was held in his hometown of Ottawa, Saville received a huge ovation when he marched into the arena after being designated as an honorary coach for the Thursday night draw. But the biggest celebration came later that evening when he joined his longtime skip Glenn Howard on the ice in the eighth end and threw two rocks for Team Ontario. There were cheers and tears for a great Briar moment. That's amazing. Wow. <laughs> Just drink it in. Sometimes curlers shoot out the lights. Other times, it goes dark by itself. In 1971 in Quebec City, a storm turned out the lights for a brief period in the middle of a game. When they came back on, all eight Alberta rocks were in the forefoot, moved there by their skip and jokester Matt Baldwin. Quebec's Guy Hemmings did something similar during a 1998 blackout with the arena in the dark. He changed the scoreboard to show his side with a big lead. And in 2017, a winter storm turned out the lights in the page three versus four match, delaying play for a while and allowing fans to light up the arena with their cell phones. 